Shalom. Noah, what does the name Noah conjure up for you? For me, it brings back memories of Bill Cosby routines from the 1960s and 70s and also children's books. So many books about Noah and the animals and, and decorations, murals in schools and libraries in children's bedrooms and playrooms. Noah has such a, um, a lovely, positive, warm, fuzzy glow about him. And then I'm reminded that years ago, uh, I knew a man in, in Israel, in Ashkelon, uh, named Moshe, who was a very sweet, lovely, wonderful man. And uh, one day I found out from a friend of his that, that he had died. And I said, oh, what a lovely man. Uh, he was so kind to everybody. And his friend said to me, yes, he was a wonderful Ben Noach. Ben Noach. I looked at him. I understood the term as a euphemism for a non-Jew. But I couldn't tell if he was saying it in a disparaging way or not. I finally figured out it was his way of just letting me know, yes, this man Moshe, who had been involved in Jewish life in Israel for so many years, was actually a non-Jew. But a, as a non-Jew, he was a believer in the one God, like so many other non-Jews. And so he used the appellation Ben Noach as a way of saying something nice about Moshe. Benoch was a term that I had not ever heard used before in the course of conversation. It's a term that I had come across in, in studying certain um, classical sacred texts, such as the Rambam, Maimonides, who lived uh, about 800 years ago and wrote in his Laws of the uh, Laws of Kings, part of a collection of laws known as the Yad HaZakah, or the Mishneh Torah. And Maimonides wrote as follows... Adam, the first human being created by God, was given six laws. Those laws dealt with matters of idolatry and blasphemy and murder and sexual sin and creating a government, a legal system, and theft. And then, after Adam, God added one more law, which he gave to Noah. That was the law called... Uh, the prohibition on eating ever mean a chai, the, the limb of a living animal. So we have seven laws that were given by God, not at Sinai, but generations, many generations, many centuries before, at the time of creation and the time of the, uh, the aftermath of the flood story. Those laws have come to be known in Jewish tradition as the seven Noahide laws. It's not spelled out that way in the Torah, but that is how the tradition has always regarded those particular seven laws, universal laws that all human beings are commanded to observe. The question is, why would the rabbis develop that tradition, uh, cultivate a tradition of seven Noahide laws that apply to all human beings if it isn't spelled out uh, explicitly in the Torah? And I think they did it as a way of putting a little bit of, a, a, of a, a break on the possibility that we Jews might take our own PR too seriously. If we believe that we're the chosen people, in other words, the people chosen to receive God's Torah, then we might believe that we're also superior to all other peoples. If we believe that we are superior to all other peoples, then we may miss the point of the teaching in last week's parasha, parasha Breshit, that all human beings are created B'Tselem Elohim, in the image of God. What does it mean that all human beings are created in the image of God? That we're all loved by God, that we are all equal as human beings, and the fact that the Jewish people has had the, the benefit of receiving God's Torah with specific guidelines and instructions and commandments is part of how... how Part of what makes the Jewish people the Jewish people, but doesn't mean that we are better. It doesn't mean that we are superior. It doesn't mean that there is anything about the Jews that can be lauded over any other people or any other religious community or any other group. We're just another one of the many groups created by the Rebbe Shalom, the master of the universe. This is alluded to in a commentary on the parasha I read a number of years ago by Arthur Kurzweil, who's probably best known as one of the most popular and active genealogists in North America, Jewish genealogists. Kurzweil writes as follows, 
We are not just members of the Jewish family, but rather of the human family. In one way or another, we are all descendants of our illustrious ancestor Noah. What a wonderful lesson to, uh, to, to learn on Parshat Noah. That we not only invoke the names of our ancestors, Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Sarov, Rachel, and Leah, the ancestors of the Jewish people, with great pride and affection, but every time we see one of those cute children's books illustrated uh, about Noah and the flood and the animals, we can take great pride that this is also an illustrious ancestor, the ancestor of all humanity. And how wonderful it is that when God makes the covenant with Noah, promising there will never be another deluge that will destroy humanity, that God's sign that God will adhere to that promise is a rainbow. Because who doesn't love a rainbow? All humanity. All human beings. We all love rainbows. Shabbat Shalom.